Greetings to one and all. Myself, Meghna Dheek. And today I'll be talking about a very interesting topic, regulatory requirement of product approval of ANDA. So, bef- so before going ahead with the topic, let us focus on clearing up basics first because if our basics won't be clear, we won't be able to understand this whole topic, like what is ANDA and what it stands for. Right. So ANDA stands for abbreviated new drug application, which is submitted to FDA for the potential approval of a generic drug product. Now, whenever we talk about ANDA, we are focusing on the generic drug products products only. And once the ANDA gets approved, an applicant may manufacture and market the generic drug product. Now, there's a reason why the applicant is making the generic drug. The reason is simple to provide a safe effective and the most important a lower cost alternative to the brand name drug it references like the brand name drug it is taking the inspiration from to market his own generic drug product apart from this the generic drug applications are term abbreviated now what's the reason behind that they are the reason the reason the main reason behind this is that they are generally not required to include preclinical animal and clinical human studies to establish safety and effectiveness like this particular step when we uh, when we uh, talk about the innovator drug or when we file the nda we have to do these steps but when it comes to gender drug products or filing the anda we are supposed to omit this step which is why we have put this term abbreviated over here just to uh, make it look convenient right so so moving on let us now focus on the types of ANDA filing. When we talk about the types of ANDA filing, we have like four paras over here. Para 1, para 2, para 3 and para 4. So in para 1, what it states is, is like the drug has not been patented or the patent info is not available in orange book. Now this is, this is a very interesting term that we have over here, which is orange book. Now orange book basically has all those drugs all those drugs approved by FDA on the basis of safety and effectiveness, be it innovative drug or the generic drug. Both of these drugs are included in this book if they are approved by FDA on the measures of safety and effectiveness, like I mentioned. In Para 2, what we have is like the patent for the drug has already expired. Para 3 states, the patent for product exists, like the patent exists, but the generic company wants to enter the market after the expiry of the patent. And Para 4 states, the patent is not infringed upon or is invalid. So this was all about the types of ANDA files. Moving on, again over here we have some little information about the orange book about which I have already mentioned in the previous slide but once again would not be a harm, right? So uh, like I mentioned, this orange book basically contains all approved products, both innovator, the, 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 the term is, the key term is both innovator and generic are listed in FDA's approved drug products with therapeutic equivalence evaluations orange book like I mentioned. So when we talk about the ANDA, three copies of the applications are required, an archival copy, a review copy, and a field copy. Now the FDA will maintain guidance documents. The FDA will maintain guidance documents to document on the format and content of applications to assist applicants in their preparation. Now maintaining these guidance documents becomes very much important when we talk about the ANDA. Next up, we have the ANDA specifications. Now, in the ANDA specification, the ANDA will basically list the new drug's established name, its trade name, its chemical name, dosage form, strength, route of administration, and proposed use. Whatever is required, that all will be mentioned in the ANDA specification. The ANDA will also be asking for the name of the listed drug product to which the proposed generic is an equivalent, like the ANDA is working on the generic drug product, right? So it must be taking inspiration. It must be referencing. It must be referencing from some brand name drug. So whichever brand name drug it's taking the inspiration from, the information of that particular brand name drug would be uh, mentioned and would be given for the ANDA application. 
Now, the AND also addresses whether the drug is for the treatment of a rare illness and whether the drug will be over the counter or prescription based only. So, all these information becomes very much important for the generic drug product. Uh, apart from this, the applicant is also required to attach supplemental data on drug chemistry, manufacturing and controls and other technical information. And if the AND is approved, the generic drug will be listed in the orange book, which lists all the medicines the FDA has found to be safe, effective and low cost alternative for the public. I have talked about the orange book in the previous two slides. It's the same about the orange book over here. Moving on. Next up, we have the regulations pertaining to ANDA. Now, the, all the regulations pertaining to ANDA will be talked about over here. I'll be talking about like all those regulations over here. But particularly, we'll, we are focusing on CFR, which stands for Code of Federal Regulations. Now, the CFR is divided into 50 titles, which represent broad areas subject to federal regulations. The FDS portion of the CFR interprets the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act and related statutes. So the section which is the most important for us being in this pharmaceutical field is Section 21, which states the Section 21 of the CFR contains most of the regulations pertaining to food and drugs. Now the following regulations, the regulations applying to the ANDA process are these three that we have mentioned over here 21 CFR part 314 applications for FDA approval to market a new drug or an antibiotic drug 21 CFR part 320 bioavailability and bioequivalence requirements and the third is 21 CFR part 310 new drugs now the most important part has come up the documents required for ANDA. So uh, we will be filling the ANDA form, but what all these forms are, I have mentioned all these forms over here. Like the filing review, the first up we have the filing review of ANDA's map, including filing checklist. Second, the most important form, the most important form that we have to fill for ANDA is the form FDA 356H, which is the application to market a new drug, biologic or antibiotic drug for human use. Third would be the instructions for, for using form FDA 356H. Next up, we have the instructions for completing form FDA 3794 generic drug user fee cover sheet. Then up, we have form FDA 3674 certification of compliance instructions included over here. Then last, we have the drug master file. So these all are the documents which are required for ANDA. So over here, we have information regarding the pre-assigned ANDA number. So the applicants can request for a pre-assigned ANDA number only when they're submitting a new ANDA. If, if they're converting an established ANDA into an ECDD, they have to use the original ANDA application number that they got in the first place. So next up, we have the electronic submissions. So the FDA is no longer accepting the paper ANDA submissions. The reason is simple. If you'll go the paper ANDA submissions way, so the process becomes way much longer and it becomes kind of tiring too. So we all are living in this era, era of artificial intelligence and the world is digitalizing. Everybody is kind of progressing with the technology. And so has FDA, right? So just to make the process convenient and way much easier for not just them, for not just like FDA and for like all of us, they have asked for like the ANDA submissions to be in ECDD format. How is it like? Let me tell you all. So ECDD submission um, sizing 10 GB or less, it should be using the FDA electronic submission gateway which is ESG but if in case the ECDD submission is greater than 10 GB it has to be submitted via physical media which can be a DVD or USB drive and it has to be submitted to the CDER document room or via like I mentioned ESG which is was the electronic submission gateway and we can also see the guidance for the industry over the link that I've mentioned over here, the transmitting electronic submissions using ECD specifications and other document 
and ECTD guidance and specifications are available on the FDA ECTD website. Now, till now we were focusing on the CFR and also like the guidance documents. Now let's particularly focus on the laws, regulations, policies and procedures. So over here we have this act which is known as the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. It's the basic food and drug law of the US. The law is intended to assure consumers that foods are pure and wholesome, safe to eat and produced under sanitary conditions, that drugs and devices are safe and effective for their intended use. So for this particular act, it's not just the drugs that are included in this act. It's the drugs, it's the devices, it's, it's also the cosmetics that we're using. All these kind of things are included in this. They come under this particular act. So like I was mentioning, the devices should be safe and effective for the intended use and the cosmetics should also be safe. They should be made from appropriate ingredients and like not just the manufacturing part. With this act, we are not just focusing on the, the scratch part like the manufacturing or just the raw materials. It's not it's not just adhere to that particular part, but it is extended to also the labeling, packaging. So it's kind of like uh, in one in, in one way you can say that this act named as the Federal Food Drug and Cosmetic Act is basically focusing on any drug product that we are making. Let's just focus on a drug product that we are making. So it is focusing right from the scratch when we are choosing the raw materials, the API, the excipients, all the processes be it the clinical side but because we are focusing on a and a let's just omit the clinical studies because we don't do the preclinical and the clinical studies so we'll not talk about that over here but apart from that all other processes would be included till the labeling packaging and the marketing all will be coming under this particular act so this per this act becomes very much important moving on we already talked about the code of federal regulations earlier but for now let us just uh, talk about let i'll just mention about the regulations which directly apply to the a and d process i already mentioned like for us being in this pharmaceutical field section 21 of the cfr which basically contains not the section 21 but cfr contains 50 titles which i've mentioned earlier apart in this also the section 21 of the cfr it contains most of the regulations pertaining to food and drugs right so the the regulation which directly apply to the ANDA process are 21 CFR part 314 applications for FDA approval to market a new drug and 21 CFR part 320 bioavailability and bioequivalence requirements next up we have we call it as in short map which stands for Manual of Policies and Procedures. So CDER's Manual of Policies and Procedures maps document internal practices and procedures followed by CDER staff to help standardize the drug review process and other activities both internal and external. So in this the chapter 5200 covers generic drug processes and activities. This chapter becomes very much important over here. So when we talk about the A and D, the module 3 becomes very much important of the CDD because it kind of deals with the quality section. So like I've mentioned, the module 3 content basically has the 3.1 states, the module 3 table of contents, the TOC. In 3.2, we have the body of data. In 3.3, we will mention the literature references. So in body of data, we have 3.2.S, drug substances and 3.2.p drug product so in drug substances we will be having journal information the name of the manufacturer manufacturing of drug substance characterization of drug substance quality control of drug substance reference standards or materials container closure system stability of drug substance in the drug product which is the 3.2.p we will be having control of excipients and control of drug product so we have discussed a lot about the regulatory requirements of product approval of AND. But what about the AND approval process? This whole process becomes very much important. And through this flowchart present over here, I would like to throw some light on this 
particular process. So moving on to that, for instance, an applicant files an ANDA. So at first place, it will be reviewed by the OGD. Now OGD is the Office of Gendered Drugs because we are dealing with the AND application and we're dealing with the gendered drug products. So it will be reviewed by the OGD only, right? So if the OGD found finds any kind of malfunctions in the ANDA, so they will issue a refuse to file letter and the applicant has to work upon all those malfunctions and then come back again for the review by the OGD at the first place. On the contrary, if the OGD is happy or if he sees that all the there's no malfunction in the ANDA or the gender drug product is completely okay for uh, for marketing for marketing or like to market for the uh, for the uh, consumers out there so then the ANDA will go for review in four departments which is which which basically is the bioequivalence review chemistry review labeling review and the request for plant inspection then also all these four kind of reviews will be done and if there is any kind of malfunction again in these four kind of reviews uh, again a, a deficiency letter is, is issued for all these four departments i would say like for instance if there's any kind of malfunction in the bioequivalence review then a bioequivalence deficiency letter is, is issued to work upon the deficiencies which are found in this particular reviewing the same goes for the chemistry or the plant inspection too they'll also file a non-approval letter and if in case your a and d application passes all these four uh, kind of like reviews or or like test i would say then it would go for the pre-approval inspection and if it's again it's it's a yes then the a and d gets completely approved by the ogd and then they will fax a fax and mail to the a and d applicant that they they can market their gender drug product in the market and if it's a no then again the approval is kind of like put into this pending kind of section and then again they have to work upon their malfunction whichever are present so this is just the gist of the a and d approval process next so we have talked about the a and d let's just also know the difference between the a and d and nd the basic difference that we have so ND requirements and ANDA requirements are both kind of same but as you can see in the ND requirements what we are needing is clinical studies, the animal studies, bioavailability but in the ANDA like I have mentioned earlier too we are, not, we, we are not supposed to have the animal studies and clinical studies. So this is the basic difference between ND and ANDA while filing both of them. So this is all I have mentioned in this particular slide. So the same goes in this particular slide too, like the difference between submission of ANDA and NDA. So let's just take into that. So for the ANDA requirements, well control and clinical studies to demonstrate effectiveness. For the ANDA, detailed descriptions of the components is needed. Whenever we talk about the ANDA, preclinical and clinical data is sub is kind of needed to show the safety. But for the ANDA, manufacturing, controls, packaging and labeling data is, is kind of sufficient to assure bioavailability or bioequivalence of the drug to be marketed. Because in ANDA, we are dealing with the gender drug products, right? And in the NDA, we are dealing with the innovative drug. So the, this kind of difference arises. There's no question about it. Then again, the NDA, we have mentioned like there should be detailed description of manufacturing and packaging procedures. There should be proposed annotated labeling referencing all studies from which statement contained in the package insert has been derived. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much for your time.